Hello everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 210, I'll introduce a new way to both document and also govern an architecture called ADL, or Architecture Definition Language. Uh, the architecture definition language uh, that my friend Neil Ford and I came up with last year is really a pseudocode for describing and governing the architecture of a system. Uh, it's fairly free form and it's not very formal, um, but let me show you the three sections that we came up with. Uh, the first is metadata that describes uh, essentially what this definition is. In other words, what it requires, its description, category, and stuff. And then we describe all sorts of artifacts ranging from systems to domains, subdomains, components, services, libraries, and so on. And then finally, actions that we can take based on those artifacts, such as assertions and also iterations through those. Uh, what I want to do in this short les lesson is really introduce how this ADL or architecture definition language can be used and then I'll show you some resources towards the end of the video where you can actually learn more about this idea. So <clears throat> with an architecture definition language the idea is through this pseudocode we're able to describe our architecture. Uh, but not only describe it as with like d uh, diagrams, for example, or documentation, but create executable source code from this uh, through generation, through uh, generative AI, um, but also being able to use the architecture definition language uh, to be able uh, to write fitness functions for operational concerns as well as process concerns as well. So let me show you a couple of examples of this. And I want to really start with the structural aspect. Uh, way back in uh, the beginning of January of 2024, I recorded Lesson 177, where I talked about logical architecture components. And within there, I associated logical components with a directory or namespace structure. In other words, in that video, what I showed is that the higher level directory nodes really represent the domain and subdomains of your system, uh, whereas the leaf nodes represent uh, the actual components, such in this case as order fulfillment and order shipping. It's how we realize or actually see uh, the architecture in uh, the source code. Let's leverage this concept and take it one step further to be able to not only describe the structure of our system, but also to be able to govern that through executable code. So let's write an ADL to define the domains, for example. Here we have two notice, ordering and processing, based on those higher level directories. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a description here, define domains. And under there, I'm going to put the category of this, which is a structural type of architecture definition. Here I'm going to first define our system order entry as order entry. Notice the as piece points to that highest level directory node. That represents our system. Then I'm going to define the domains. So I'm going to define domain ordering, which is the logical name, as ordering, and that points to the namespace or the directory structure. And then I'm going to define the domain order processing as processing, pointing to that. Now what I'm going to do is assert that all classes are only contained within these directories and any ones below it. And so now I've been able to at least uh, describe the domains within my system. Now let's take this one step further and let's describe the processing domain. So here I'm going to put my description as defining the processing domain. My category is still structural. The system is still order entry as, don't forget that order entry. Now I'm going to define my domain again, order processing as processing and that points to that directory structure there that represents that domain. Now, within there, we notice we have two components. So let's define those. I can define the component order fulfillment as fulfillment, which points to that directory or namespace, and then component order shipping as shipment, pointing there. And I can assert that all classes are only contained within these components. And so this aligns the architecture with the structure of the source code. And as a matter of fact, I can take, for example, the defined domains, put that through some sort of generative AI tool, 
and actually create executable source code. In this case, the prompt was, given this pseudocode, generate an arc unit test in Java. And that was the prompt, and this is what it actually created. Now I have executable source code to ensure that my architecture or the implementation is aligned with the architecture. Well, this is interesting, but let's talk about the real world because I want to show you a really good use and leverage of ADL. So in the real world, here we have our order entry. Notice the processing domain with two components. Here's our corresponding architecture diagram that shows processing with those two components. Uh, we have our corresponding ADL, which defines those, and executable source code to make sure all these are in alignment. But what happens in the real world? We get changes. For example, please add functionality for customers to be able to track their shipment. So consequently, what the development team does is they add a new directory or a new namespace. Effectively, though, what we learned in Lesson 177 is that ACK is actually adding a new architectural component. And once that happens, the problem is our ADL, our architecture definition, is no longer in sync. As a matter of fact, that executable code test fails. And furthermore, the architecture diagrams are no longer in sync with the actual implementation. That failed test is the key because what ADL does, architecture definition language, is it allows for that fast feedback. Now, as a matter of fact, it's not meant to kind of slap, slap developers' hands, but rather form a tighter communication and collaboration between architects and development teams. Because now that things are out of sync, we have that placeholder, that failed test. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fix the architecture definition language to define a new component. Notice here, I define component order tracking as tracking. Uh, then what I'm going to do, and so now that's all set, is update my architecture diagrams to add that order tracking component. And now that's in sync. And the final part is regenerating the test from this architecture definition language. And now we have an executable test that passes. So the idea is this can be a vehicle to not only get fast feedback for something that changed in the implementation that's not matching the architecture, uh, but forces a communication point uh, between the architect and the developer. Uh, let me show you one more example of how ADL can actually be used. So let's say we have a product owner that says uh, the order submit API call must scale to 5,000 concurrent customers with an average response time of 600 milliseconds under load. And the architect says, okay, no problem. Well, two questions for you. First, where's this information documented? I'm hoping it's somewhere. And also, how do we verify this capability? That's where we can leverage ADL. So I'm going to write an architecture definition language. I'm going to say the type is operational and the capability is scalability. Now I can say description, scalability for order submit API, and now start to define the system, order entry. I can define a couple of components uh, or constants. Uh, constant max user load is 5,000 and define the average response time is 650. And I can assert that the response time is less than or equal to the average response time at max user load. Now, the cool thing is I can take this ADL right here and use it as the description of the architecture from this particular capability to write my own custom fitness function or to leverage it within the operational uh, tools that we have, the observability tools and metrics gathering tools that we have uh, to be able to ensure uh, this capability. And that would produce this kind of graph where we can actually now do uh, the trend analysis for order submit API, all stemming from uh, that architecture definition language. Whereas we see as we start increasing our user load, uh, that response time stays at that average. This is pretty neat stuff. And these are only two examples. Um, so uh, for more resources, 
Uh, first, if you go to my website, developer2architect.com, uh, go to the resource tab or the menu and about three down, you'll see, uh, three resources down, uh, you'll see a reference guide to the architecture definition language. I've included the uh, link here as well as in the description uh, landing page for this lesson. Also, uh, thank you so much, David, uh, for actually doing a really nice write-up article on ADL um, uh, earlier this month. And this is a great reference. Uh, also, a great guy to follow as well. So. Um, Anyway, so this has been Lesson 210, just a quick tour of ADL and architecture definition language and, and the possibilities and how it could actually be used uh, to be able to describe our architecture through executable source code. So thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned next month for another lesson in Software Architecture Monday.